So it's been a while since I made a, an actual install video and I'm glad that I uh, did the other day because I realized that uh, the newer Dragon OS Focal builds uh, at some point I had broken the ability to install offline without internet in a UEFI mode. Um, so I fixed that and I figured I'd make this uh, video just showing probably the recommended way of installing it. You can download the ISO, of course you can make it into a virtual machine, you can burn it to DVD, you can uh, make a bootable USB, make a bootable USB persistent. Uh, and uh, so to do uh, a persistent USB, which you can then install uh, in a virtual machine or uh, on a computer, you download the ISO. Uh, and what, one thing you should do is uh, after downloading that ISO, get this right here. <clears throat> You download the MD5 uh, file with it, and you can use the cert util file within uh, Windows, or I'm sure there's something, uh, well, I know there's something equivalent in uh, Mac and uh, Linux, but <clears throat> you download the MD5 file, you can open up with uh, WordPad or something else you look at the MD5 and you compare that to what the cert utility uh, program pumps out and there's other ways you can do it where you can just straight take the ISO and the MD5 file and compare it for you so just make sure that those numbers match that way you know you're getting a good ISO and there's nothing wrong there so this with this here should match. All right. So I've downloaded uh, both the Rufus tool and the Etcher tool, but we're going to want to open the Rufus tool to make a persistent USB. We'd select our image that we downloaded and we can. I don't, the USB stick is not, uh, doesn't have a lot of storage, the one that I have in there, so just slide uh, the persistent partition size. If you have a bigger stick, of course, you can make a more persistent partition size there. Uh, leave everything as is. You got to have internet access because it's going to want to download, um, which I've already done, but you want to have internet access so it can download the uh, what it needs to make this happen. <clears throat> So we'll move this out of the way, hit that finish, we're going to open up, I'm going to go ahead and change this to UE, uh, EFI, UEFI. <clears throat> and this is what it will look like uh, booting with UEFI. Uh, whether it's IS, uh, DVD, USB, you're going to get this file system check prompt that comes up. I'm going to go ahead and skip that. So when it boots up, it's going to go straight into the desktop. The username is live with no password automatically logs in. If you let it sit for a while, the screen will lock. Just go ahead and use live uh, as the username, all lowercase, no password. You might have to do it twice because sometimes the screen uh, immediately locks after install, or I'm sorry, after the screen locks. So just to show uh, the most recommended way, I'm going to disable networking. <clears throat> I'm going to start the installer. Now, if you wanted to run this live, the one thing you're going to have to at least do on your own, you're going to have to look in the user source, and you're going to have to run the SDR Play installer if you want SDR Play support. You may have to uh, rebuild a Cubic SDR that's installed uh, 
in source. Um, but if you install this, uh, as I recommend, then that will all be taken care of for you. So double click the installer. We'll run through the install. I disabled the networking. Uh, that way you'll know that everything works uh, as it was built. <clears throat> I do go ahead and I check mark the install third-party software and graphics that should uh, pull in all the PPAs and repositories that I've uh, added. But uh, disabling the ability to download updates while installing uh, is just going to take uh, the headache out of the. I mean, because it's going to be inevitable. There's probably going to be some download that, if you let it just do it on its own may break something considering the amount of things that are added in Dragon OS. So you can do advanced features uh, after erasing disk uh, and installing Dragon OS to enable encryption, disk encryption if you want. I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just going to hit install now. Now if after installation you uh, want to use the app uh, get uh, package management and see what can be updated, I recommend doing that and then determining uh, what you want to update. There is something uh, within uh, Dragon OS or even just Lubuntu 20.04 in general uh, that'll pop up uh, from now and then. Pretty sure it's the apply full upgrade uh, prompt that's coming up and want you to update. Again, I would be very hesitant on doing that and just do it manual uh, via the command line. So I'm gonna let this install and we'll come back all right, I'm back. It's finished. That last part uh, you would have watched. It would have been copying the uh, what's needed for UEFI to boot. So that's good now. We'll restart. All right, we're restarting. Let's see, it's uh, still in UEFI mode. The first time you log in, you'll see uh, this is where I put prompt to install the uh, SDR Play API. If you don't uh, want to install it, you can hit no and skip that. And you can install it manually. And then kind of behind the scenes, I have it scripted out to where it adds your user to uh, some additional groups like Kismet, Yate, and uh, uh, some other things. Uh, it's rebuilding a couple things behind the scenes. And now you should be good and you will have it uh, installed. It's good that this popped up. This is what I'm talking about. I would uh, recommend just hitting close. And then if you want, just do things manually. A uh, couple things I'll point out. So if after installation you find that for some reason or another your whole app uh, ability to app update is, is not working, I have seen on occasion where after installation the whole app uh, repository is missing. It didn't get zipped up uh, or put back during the installation. Unfortunately, uh, I, I just recommend reinstalling at that point unless you have a backup of an app uh, 20.04 folder somewhere. Uh, other than that I've seen it on occasion after logging in and out a whole bunch of times the uh, my uh, what you call it the desktop uh, wallpaper in the background uh, for some reason or another the setting just uh, reverts to like a black background no big deal. Uh, if you really like my background picture you can find it in uh, user share applications or user share maybe it's Lubuntu wallpapers and it's one of these in here uh, that should be about it that'll get you up and running and um, 
you can find all the installed programs over on uh, SourceForge or in the Google Drive in the README. Stuck, like I always say, pretty much all the source uh, here so that if you needed to rebuild it or alter it or uninstall it. And then, uh, yeah, should get you up and running. Thanks.